In 101 AC, King Jahiris Targaryen I assembles a great council to elect a successor, since both of his sons have died. The lords and houses of the Seven Kingdoms choose Viserys, Jahiris' eldest grandson, over Rhaenys, Jahiris' eldest grandchild, simply because he is a man and she is a woman. After King Jahiris has long passed and in the ninth year of King Viserys Targaryen's reign as king on the Iron Throne, his wife Emma is almost due with a pregnancy that he hopes will finally give him a son. Given that his daughter, Rhaenyra, cannot be his heir, in anticipation of his heir's birth, the king organizes a tournament. During the tournament, his wife goes into a complicated labor that eventually requires the king to choose between the queen and the child's life. Pushed to the wall, Viserys opts for the child's life, but the child dies soon after birth, leaving the king without a wife, a son and heir. After the funeral, the small council discusses the king's successor. Otto Hightower, the king's hand, tries to convince Viserys that Daemon, Viserys' younger brother, long since had his eyes on the throne and is a poor choice of a successor. Viserys doesn't believe him until Otto informs him that Daemon had called his dead son the heir for a day. In retaliation, Viserys strips Daemon of his claim as his successor and makes Rhaenyra heir to the Iron Throne, also telling her of Aegon, the Conqueror's dream of the fall of men by the hands of the White Walkers during the Long Night, and that if men is to survive, a Targaryen must sit on the Iron Throne and unite the Seven Kingdoms to defeat the others. Later, Otto sends Alicent, his daughter, and Rhaenyra's best friend to help the king grieve the loss of the queen by offering herself to him. Six months later, Lord Corlys Valerian, husband to Princess Rhaenys, the king's cousin, storms into a council meeting to complain about the destruction of his ships and the murder of his men at the Stepstones by the Triarchy, a coalition from Essos consisting of the free cities of Lys, Myr, and Terush. However, the king declines to take action to avoid a war with the free cities. When Rhaenyra voices her disagreement about this in the small council, she is sent away to choose a new member for the Kingsguard, which happens to be Sir Criston Cole. Sometime later, the king falls ill after getting a cut from the Iron Throne, and only gets worse as time goes on. As the king holds a conversation with Alicent in his chamber, Otto walks in and informs the king that Daemon has retreated to Dragonstone and is to wed another wife, but also that he has stolen the dragon egg which was reserved for the king's dead son, indicating that he is claiming himself to be the true heir. Angered by Daemon's theft, Viserys sends Otto and a few men to retrieve the egg. Unknown to them, Princess Rhaenyra follows them on her dragon Cyrax and convinces Daemon to surrender the egg and his claim to the throne, solving the family crisis without any blood being shed. Meanwhile, back at King's Landing, the king seeks counsel regarding Lord Corliss's plan to arrange his 12-year-old daughter for the king and gets the green light. However, when he announces his intent to take a new wife the following day, he decides to take Alicent instead. Lord Corliss and Rhaenyra don't take this well. As a result, Lord Corliss seeks help from the shunned Daemon with his triarchy problem in the Stepstones. Three years later, Daemon and Corliss are still fighting the Triarchy on the Stepstones, with the Triarchy being led by the Mirish Prince, Admiral Kragus Drahar, also known as the Crab Feeder, for feeding his prisoners of war to the crabs. Meanwhile, back at King's Landing, the people celebrate the second name day of Aegon II, by Cyrus's first son with Alicent, and they commemorate it with a hunt. During the celebration, Rhaenyra finds out, to her displeasure, that her father intends to wed her to Lord Jason Lannister, Lord of Casterly Rock. As an alternative, Otto suggests Viserys marry Rhaenyra to Aegon, but Viserys turns that down instantly. Shortly after, Lord Lionel Strong, the Master of Laws, suggests that the king marry the princess to Laenor, son of Corlys, to re-strengthen the bond between the two houses again 
and the king ponders on it. After the hunt, the king sends reinforcements to Daemon and Corlys at the Stepstones, and being asked for help by Vaemond, Valerian, Corlys's brother. However, after hearing of this, Daemon takes the fight to the Triarchy and the Crab Feeder himself, killing the Prince Admiral in single combat and vanquishing the Triarchy forces. Back in King's Landing, Viserys and Rhaenyra hold a conversation where she pours out her heart. Viserys assuages his daughter's fears by letting her know he doesn't intend to replace her as heir, but instead strengthen her hold on the throne. Rhaenyra's two-month search for a husband fails, earning Viserys' displeasure. Meanwhile, her uncle Daemon returns to King's Landing, a victor and new king of the Narrow Sea, and swears allegiance to Viserys. Afterward, he links up with Rhaenyra in a brothel, and they get intimate, but don't have sex. When Rhaenyra then returns home, she decides to have sex with her personal Kingsguard, Sir Criston Cole. However, Trouble soon comes knocking when one of Otto's spies informs him that he had seen the princess and Daemon in a brothel. Power hungry as he is, Otto relays this information to the king, but the king doesn't believe him and summons Daemon. Things get tense between the king and Daemon when Daemon requests Rhaenyra's hand in marriage. Angered by his request, Viserys sends him back to the Vale, where Daemon's estranged wife, Rhea Royce, is. Later that night, Viserys informs Rhaenyra of his intention to wed her to Laenor, to which she agrees. After the conversation, the king realizes Otto has been working toward a personal ambition all the while by putting his daughter, Alicent, into the royal bloodline, and intending to do the same with Aegon. In retaliation, Viserys strips Otto of his title as Hand of the King. After being sent back to the Vale, Daemon kills his wife as soon as he sees her. Meanwhile, back at King's Landing, Viserys sails to Driftmark with Rhaenyra and the new Hand, Lord Lionel, to arrange the marriage between his daughter and Laenor. As he discusses with Laenor's parents, Laenor and Rhaenyra go for a walk and agree to do their parents' bidding, despite having their own love interests. Rhaenyra has a secret relationship with Sir Criston, while Laenor has one with Sir Joffrey Lonmouth. After the return to King's Landing, Sir Criston accidentally confesses his affair with Rhaenyra to Alicent, after she tries to ask if there was an affair between Daemon and Rhaenyra. The recent news breaks her heart, as she took Rhaenyra's word over her father's, an act that led to the loss of his position as Hand of the King. Consequent to prior discussions between the houses Targaryen and Valerian, a celebration is hosted to celebrate Rhaenyra and Laenor's union, with Alicent attending the wedding in a green gown, the battle color of her house. However, the festivities are cut short when Sir Joffrey realizes that Sir Criston is Rhaenyra's secret lover and confronts him about it. Feeling threatened, Sir Criston Cole attacks Sir Joffrey and eventually kills him. To wrap things up, Rhaenyra and Laenor wed before their parents while Alicent stops Sir Criston from committing suicide. Meanwhile, the king's ailing health reveals itself. Ten years later, Rhaenyra's newborn son Joffrey fuels accusations and rumors that her sons, including the previous two, Jaceris and Lucerys, are not Laenor's children, but that of Harwin Strong, Lionel Strong's eldest son, due to the fact of having dark-colored hair instead of silver. Despite being aware of the accusations, Viserys stands fast to his decision to keep Rhaenyra heir to the Iron Throne instead of Aegon, his firstborn son with Alicent. Meanwhile, Daemon has been married to Lady Lena, Lord Corlys's daughter, and has two daughters from the Union, Rhaena and Bela, with one more on the way. Back at King's Landing, Sir Harwin engages Sir Criston in a fight, after he speaks ill of Rhaenyra's children. After that, Sir Harwin's action lends credence to the rumors that he's the true father to Rhaenyra's children. Later that day, Lord Lionel, now Hand of the King, pitches his resignation to the King, due to Sir Harwin's fight with Criston. But the King refuses, so he only accompanies his eldest son to their home of Harrenhal. However, the next day, Lionel's younger son Larys, who has grown closer to Queen Alicent, has his father and brother killed during a fire in Harrenhal. 
because the queen wanted her father to be hand of the king again, and close to her. Meanwhile, in Pentos, Lady Lena goes into hard labor, and her husband Damon is asked to pick who to save. While he's still thinking about it, Lena leaves the labor room and commands her dragon, Vagar to burn her to Damon's horror. Upon news of Lena's death, the entire Valerian family, the king and other important individuals, go to Driftmark for Lady Lena's funeral. After the funeral, Princess Rhaenys blames her husband, Lord Corlys, for their daughter's death. As that happens, Daemon and Rhaenyra make out by the seaside. Meanwhile, Aemond, one of Viserys' sons, is confronted by Bela, Rhaena, Jaceris, and Lucerys after he takes command of Lady Lena's dragon, Vagar, Things escalate when he calls Jaceris and Lucerys bastards, and he loses an eye for it. Eventually, angered by the fact, Alicent demands an eye from Lucerys, but Rhaenyra steps in at the last moment and prevents it, with the king forbidding anyone to ever mention the bastard lineage of his grandchildren again. The following day, the king and queen return to King's Landing. After that, Rhaenyra and Daemon, eager to get married, conspire to fake Laenor's death so he can be free to live out his life the way he wants it, with his lover, Carl. With the plan successful, and Rhaenys and Corlys believing their son to be dead, the now seemingly widowed Rhaenyra marries her uncle Daemon for love and power, in hopes of stopping the power-hungry Hightowers from claiming the throne when the sick king will die. Six years later, during a battle, Lord Corlys gets a life-threatening injury that sidelines him from the political battle for the Iron Throne. Vaymond Valerian uses the opportunity of Lord Corlys's incapacitation to further his ambition for the throne, even though Lord Corlys has already chosen Lucerys as his successor. Given that Lucerys is Rhaenyra's son, she and Daemon avail themselves at King's Landing in honor of Vaymond's petition. Upon arrival, they realize the king is in far worse condition than they expected. As a result, the court is left to Alicent and Otto. While that stews on, Alicent expresses her fury to Aegon, who has no interest in being heir to the Iron Throne, but simply wants to have fun all day, every day. Later that night, Rhaenyra pleads with Viserys to preside over the petition, and the king honors her request, showing up in court the following day to everybody's surprise. During the petition, Vaymond gets furious and openly calls Rhaenyra's children bastards despite the king's commands. His outburst leads to his death by the hands of Daemon, and the matter is resolved in Lucerys' favor. Afterward, the king admonishes his children to live as a family. When he retires to his chambers, he mistakes Alicent for Rhaenyra and tells her about the Song of Ice and Fire, a dream by Aegon the Conqueror about a prince that was promised who would unite the Seven Kingdoms against a common supernatural foe. After the queen leaves, he dies. When news of the king's death gets to Alicent, she, Otto, and the council make Aegon his successor. To prevent any counterclaims to the throne, Sir Harold, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, is asked to get Rhaenyra killed, but he refuses, declaring his loyalty to the king. Amidst all the chaos, Aegon's nowhere to be found. So, Alicent and her father separately send their men after him. When they eventually find Aegon, they force every lord loyal to Rhaenyra to swear allegiance to him as the new king. Meanwhile, Princess Rhaenys is locked in a room only to be let out if she agrees to support Aegon, but she refuses. The next day, Sir Eric, one of the king's guard, rescues Rhaenys, and she escapes to her dragon, Melis. When Rhaenys arrives at Dragonstone, she informs Daemon and Rhaenyra about Viserys' death, Aegon's ascension to the throne, and the coming attack. The shock of the news sends Rhaenyra into premature labor. As that goes on, Daemon prepares for the oncoming battle by planning to call on the allegiance of several great houses, and mustering as many dragons as they can, including Vernathor. Given that Rhaenyra was far from her due date, the child dies, and is cremated afterwards. Almost immediately, Sir Eric arrives. Having stolen the king's crown, 
and swears his loyalty to Rhaenyra. After that, Otto arrives with his knights, bearing news from Alicent. Rhaenyra is to acknowledge Aegon as king, if she wants to keep Dragonstone and reserve high positions for her sons. Rhaenyra decides to sit on the proposal, as she doesn't intend to go to war for the Iron Throne, given her father's dream was that she would bring the kingdoms together. When Lord Corlys finally wakes, he swears allegiance to Rhaenyra. As part of their efforts to curry allies, Rhaenyra sends her sons to Lady Jane Arryn, her mother's cousin, Lord Cregan Stark of Winterfell, and Lord Boros Baratheon of Storm's End. However, when Lucerys gets to Storm's End, he unexpectedly finds Aemond, who reignites an old grudge and requests Lucerys' eye. After striking a deal with Aemond for his support in exchange for Aemond marrying his daughter, Boros restrains him from shedding blood within his jurisdiction and lets Lucerys go. But Aemond has other plans on the back of his dragon, Vagar. As Lucerys tries to escape, his dragon Arax goes out of control and attacks Vagar, angering it. Aemond tries to calm it, but his attempts are futile, as the dragon tears Lucerys and his dragon into pieces. News of Lucerys' death gets to Rhaenyra, leaving her completely heartbroken. And so the dance of the dragons between the Greens, referring to Alicent's party, and the Blacks, who are supporting Rhaenyra, has officially started.